Wagwan Goody. It is your girl City Static and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the Goody gang. Okay? Okay. So first off, happy Black History Month, y'all. Of course, we have the shortest month of the year, but we always make do what we got. And that's on what? Period. So on our Black History Month, I decided to start a new segment on my channel called Designer Black History, where I talk about famous black designers, their legacy, and history while sketching out one of their famous designs or a design of theirs that I really like. So I decided to start the week off with Zelda Wynn. Zelda Wynn was an African-American fashion designer famous for dressing high-profile black celebrities and entertainers of the 1940s and also designing the Playboy costume. I'll be sketching one of Zelda Wynn's designs for Joyce Bryant. Joyce Bryant was a famous cabaret singer in the 1940s and I'll talk about her a little bit more because she is part of Zelda's design history. So let's get started. Zelda Wynn was born June 18th, 1905 in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. There's not a definite date on her birthday. It's either between the 29th of June or the 18th of June, but I'm gonna just say 18th because that'll make her a Gemini like me, so 18th of June. Her love of sewing came from watching her grandmother seamstress create beautiful garments and she began to create dresses for dolls out of newspaper. One day, Zelda was like, Grandma, Grandma, I wanna make you a dress. I'm gonna make you a dress. And her grandmother was like, Girl, you cannot make me a dress. Do you see this length? Do you see this body? There's no way that you can make a dress to fit all of this. So now, I don't know if that's what Grandma said word for word, but her grandmother did say because of her height and because of her curviness that Zelda would not be able to make a dress to fit her to the T. And guess what Zelda did? Zelda made a dress that fit her so good and her grandmother loved it so much that she was buried in it. After graduating from Chambersburg High School in 1920, Zelda moved to White Plains, New York and worked at her uncle's tailoring shop. In the 1930s, she began to work as a stock girl at an upscale boutique and later worked her way up becoming the first black sales clerk and head seamstress at that boutique. History making, mm, mm. In her 1994 New York Times interview, she reflects and says, it wasn't a pleasant time, but the idea was to see what I can do. And she did that, okay, she did that. Of course, with being a black woman, Wynn faced many challenges and doubts about her abilities from the majority white clientele. Soon, she began to gain recognition for her keen artistic eye and technical skills. As her clientele list began to grow, she opened her shop, Zelda Wynn, in 1948 on Broadway in what is now known as Washington Heights. Zelda became the first black woman to open a business on Broadway. Yeah, girl. Another history check right there. I see you, girl. I see you. I see you. Her body hugging and accentuating designs caught the eye of the hottest black celebrities and entertainers of the time, like Dorothy Dandridge, Josephine Baker, Eartha Kitt, and Ella Fitzgerald, whom Zelda only measured once in their 12-year work relationship. So, she only measured Ella Fitzgerald once, but she made Ella Fitzgerald a whole bunch of gowns and dresses because I was looking back at pictures of Ella Fitzgerald and she always had on nice, beautiful gowns. That girl has a body on her, okay? <laughs> Zelda once said that she, Ella Fitzgerald, would order, always in a rush, I would always have to study photos of her and guess her increasing size. She would always say they fit and would order more, always three at a time. I am pleased to say I never missed a delivery. Heard you sis. Wynn is also responsible for the star revamp of cabaret singer Joyce Bryant. Zelda suggested that showing more skin and sensuality would project Joyce's career, and she was right. Joyce's career skyrocketed. Thanks to her new look, she earned a spread in Time Magazine and was given the title, The Black Marilyn Monroe. The dresses Joyce wore were so form-fitting and tight, she needed help walking, and Zelda would often help her dress for her nightclub gigs. The success of Joyce Bryant was a win, as with Zelda's career also took off with Joyce's career. Oh, that's so nice. Zelda Wynn also designed the famous Blue Ice wedding dress for Maria Ellison when she married Nat King Cole. The name Blue Ice comes from the ice blue satin that she used to create the dress. In 1950, Zelda's self-titled shop moved from Washington Heights 
to 57th Street near Carnegie Hall and renamed it Ches Valdez. That sounds so upscale and so chic to me, I love it. The change of location boosted her brand. Her gowns were priced at $1,000, which is today is $10,808.25. Her gift of highlighting the woman's body caught the attention of Hugh Hefner, the creator of Playboy. It is speculated that Hefner himself approached Wynn and shared his idea of a uniform for his Playboy club. On February 29, 1960, the first Playboy Bunny costume was presented at the Playboy Club in Chicago, Illinois. The original design is still used today and is the first commercial uniform registered by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So there's some debate around Zelda's exact involvement with the costume. As I was doing some more research, I found out that he happened to actually got the idea from a family friend and went to Zelda to see if she could manufacture the costume. Whether she was a sole designer, had a few says here and there, or was just involved in the manufacturing, without Zelda Wynn, the Playboy costume as we know it would not exist today. In 1970, Arthur Mitchell, the first African American to dance with the New York City Ballet, asked Zelda to design costumes for his company, the Dance Theater of Harlem. She took the position of head costume designer and held it for more than 20 years. Within those years, she designed costumes for over 80 productions. One notable innovation Zelda did was dye each pair of ballet tights individually for each dancer. Ballet tights, especially in the 1970s, were one flesh tone that matched the skin of the white majority. In 1989, Ches Zelda's doors closed for good, but Wynn continued to work with the Dance Theater of Harlem until her passing in 2001. And guys, there you have it. That is the story of Zelda Wynn. And this is also my sketch of her design for Joyce Bryant. I'm gonna post the picture so you guys can see. There you go. Nice, simple, chic, a nice, cute, sweetheart neckline with a mermaid-shaped bottom. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're notified when a video is ready for you to watch. And let me know how much you guys enjoyed this video in the comments down below. Also, follow me on the social medias. Stay tuned, because your girl coming back with more real soon. Peace.